Welcome to the third last Mock the Week. I'm Dara Breen. Joining me this week are Rhys James, Laura Lex and Glenn Moore, Angela Barnes, Hugh Dennis and Ahersha. We start with a round tonight called Picture of the Week. I show the panel a topical image and ask them to tell me what is happening. So, teams, what's going on here? Are they in a Freshers' Week intro to economics lecture? <laughs> <laughs> is Quasi Quartain saying, why haven't they beamed us up? They should have beamed us up by now. <laughs> is he saying, put your seatbelt on? Apparently, this one's called Nemesis Inferno. <laughs> <laughs> He's probably going, uh, Liz, I know, I know I should know, but what... what is the pound again? <laughs> <laughs> She's I... saying, uh, when you're Prime Minister, you can get a go on the armrest. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's an old episode of Star Trek where they drive the Enterprise into the sun. <laughs> <laughs> is this just a picture of the dartboard in the Bank of England? <laughs> This is a new male and female double act designed to make us appreciate Phil and Holly. <laughs> <laughs> it just it gives up a huge, oh, honey, can we get past this? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, she was like, she's an old college friend. We just went for coffee. Uh, she wants to get out of dancing and move into economics. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I wasn't unfaithful. I fucked the economy. <laughs> 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 Does any have the correct answer? It's uh, quasi quasi and Liz Truss, as I believe, uh, the Tory party conference. Absolutely right, thank you very much. Uh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is Prime Minister Liz Truss and Chancellor quasi Quarteng, pictured at the Conservative Party conference in Birmingham this week. How did the conference go? It went really well for Labour. <laughs> 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 Labour are now 9,000 points ahead. <laughs> It's gone really well for me, because uh, I recently invested all my money into a company that makes graphs that go like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's gone so badly. I think Netflix is going to make a documentary about it. <laughs> Fire Festival, Woodstock, Tory party conference. <laughs> <laughs> there is a... I mean, did you actually use the words, I know how you feel? Which is desperately close to, I know now why you cry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> The words the Terminator yeah. said as being slowly <laughs> being lowered into a vat of molten steel. It ended on an uplifting note. She said, we have your back, uh, which is Tory for we own your spine. <laughs> <laughs> I think the slogan's good, getting Britain moving. I think that's good, it's accurate, as long as they're talking about bowels, cos I found out yeah. what my mortgage repayments are going to be and I shit myself. <laughs> Liz Truss was voted into power by the members of the Conservative Party, who are basically a bunch of batshit home counties wingnuts with an average age of ghost. Right. Oh, I can't wait to see you. Listen, I'm sorry, but the collective noun for Tory members is a haunting. Yeah. Right? <laughs> it's, like, it's like, no, far, far, far fewer people voted for her to be Prime Minister than will watch this show, and this show is not popular enough to stay on air. <laughs> It's a shame. No one's ever going to hear you say that, ever. <laughs> yeah, thanks for coming on the third yeah, last well, show, Art. Uh... It's mad you can just sneak in. <laughs> you don't have to, like, prove you're a Tory by, like, eating a quiche or something on the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why aren't Labour there? If you can just sneak in, why aren't Labour there heckling the whole time? Why isn't Keir Starmer in the back holding up a banner with the current poll on it going, Lizzie, what's the score? Lizzie! <laughs> <laughs> you, think that, you think the Tory conference would have an away end? Yes. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> You're not uh, winning elections anymore. <laughs> <laughs> or, or, or should he be in the middle with, with a, with a... No, I am not Chris Starmer. <laughs> I am <laughs> a visiting French dignity. Le Chris You say that like the most unrecognisable man on the planet needs a disguise. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so, obviously, the question is, which policy U-turn did the government make early in the conference? Well, 45p, wasn't it? Yes. Mm -hmm. Top tax rate. And, Hugh, I am very sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to make a lot of wealth, where you? Are you planning to oh, do, do trickling down? Were you going to do a bit of trickling down? Well, that's just age, and I've been to a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> I love a U-turn. It's like a plot twist in real life. It's really fun. Yeah. Like, the Tories are like M. Night Shyamalan. And he, like, he's so good at twists, the M stands for Bernard. <laughs> People are already calling for her to go, yeah. right? I don't want that to happen at all, right? Because we all thought that it couldn't get any worse after Boris, 
and then it got worse instantly in the first week. <laughs> I don't want to see what part three of this horrible trilogy is. The only way it could be more destructive is if the next Prime Minister is a pigeon trapped in your kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> She's considered, she's considered so untrustworthy that news is going to have to start dubbing her voiceover with Gerry Adams. <laughs> <laughs> she's refused to rule out any further U-turns. She said there could be further U-turns. And I'm on board with that, OK? I yeah. think I've got a few suggestions, actually, if she wants to do some U-turns. Okay. All right. <laughs> First of all, bring back Orange Wednesdays. <laughs> what are you thinking getting rid of that? Yeah, Two for one cinema tickets and free dough balls. That's when this country peaked. <laughs> all right? <laughs> uh, increase the speed limit outside private schools. <laughs> They say no drinking on the tube. No, I say mandatory drinking on the tube. <laughs> Let's spice up that morning commute. That's my name. <laughs> Final U turn, bring back Mock of the Week. Yeah, I know. As long as Frankie's yeah. on it, I'll watch. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we're almost certainly going to go to GB News by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Liz Truss just said that she was against the anti-growth coalition and just listed things she didn't like. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. I was quite yeah. keen on her just, like, carry it. It's like, wet chips, anti-growth. Uh. <laughs> uh, that, that bit of film that you get on the top of a cup of tea sometimes, anti-growth. Uh, the film <laughs> version of Dune, anti-growth. <laughs> <laughs> like Damp <I'd>... sleeves. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So, That's the worst thing in the world. <laughs> I don't mean the joke, I mean the, the sleeves. <laughs> How often... Is that... Well, if you run a big jumper right. and your sleeves get wet... Yeah. Come on! Is that... <laughs> <laughs> Why is your sleeve wet, Glenn? Do they just well, get wet? Wash your hands, like a sensible person. Now, a sensible person doesn't get their whole arm underneath the tap. <laughs> <laughs> so be gone, Covid. Uh... I do love the idea that if she had just said damp sleeves, she gets one more vote. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on, uh, what crisis continues to engulf the UK? The Conservatives. <laughs> Other than that, so, uh, cost of living, isn't it? Cost of living crisis, absolutely. Otherwise yeah. known as inflation, I believe. People are just full of tips, are The cost of living crisis is what you need to do. In fact, one more person tells me to buy a fucking air fryer. <laughs> Expensive as well. And a cost of living crisis. Don't tell people to buy something that's really expensive. What are you going to tell me next? Oh, oh, in order to, to heat your house, why not buy a Maldive? <laughs> <laughs> I'm the same. I've like fully turned into my dad with all of this and doing all the things I criticise him for. I'm like refusing to turn the heating on until it's December. You know, I'm banging on about Thatcher all the time. All of a sudden, I'm embezzling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What is the current the new product which is suddenly spiked in price? Milk. Uh, yes, dairy product. Uh, Milk's uh, up. And now who looks up. stupid for still being breastfed? <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, but by random women, that's a bit of... <laughs> <laughs> I flew to Ireland at the weekend and it is weird seeing all, like, milk and butter in the duty-free section. <laughs> <laughs> How are some leisure centres reducing costs? Well, they're yeah. going to turn down the heat of swimming pools. Yes, they are. I mean, it will make swimming more expensive because now you're going to pay for admission, a locker, a wetsuit, and a defibrillator. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get a wetsuit. Hugh, problem. don't get a wetsuit. There's nothing worse than wet sleeves. <laughs> 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 Absolutely I, I, I don't know how relatable it was to say they were shutting the jacuzzis down, though. Like, oh, no, there'll be no more Veruca soup. <laughs> <laughs> I love a jacuzzi in a leisure centre. It's brilliant. But, no, but it's no. not brilliant when they no. turn it off, cos then you're just in a bath with strangers. <laughs> <laughs> I just assumed that local pools were heated exclusively by toddler piss. <laughs> in, in, in areas. I mean, you still yeah. get a little rush of, oh, that's nice and warm. Oh, no, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> hot tubs are very expensive to heat as well, anyway. And like, the hot tub's one of those things I think is a really, like, great idea in your head. And then you get in a hot tub and after five minutes you're like, I'm bored and my tits are cold. That's what... Because <laughs> they float, they don't warm up, right? <laughs> It's a bit like, a bit like um, you know, those things that are good in your head, in theory, like, like group sex. It's good in theory, but the reality is I'm just worried that I won't get picked. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a huge amount of experience of, of group sex, but I don't think they line people up and go, mm, yeah, I'll have that one. <laughs> uh, it's football teams at school. The big strike, I'll, I'll take the big centre-back. Yeah. One, <laughs> your <laughs> dorky kid in glass is going, oh, you never get picked for the sex. Uh, <laughs> You can, you can go in goals for the sex. Uh, <laughs> don't, be, don't, it, don't have a huge amount of experience. I recognise you under the mask. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's because I keep nodding at you. Oh, yeah, uh, Reese. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, points to Reese, I'll say. <laughs> <laughs> 
Meanwhile, what good news has the Labour Party had this week? Well, the Liz Tory Fra Party conference. Yeah, the whole thing, the entire Tory Party conference. They have a huge poll lead over the Tories. Yes. But the next general election is ages away. So it's nice to know, and it's interesting to know, but it's not useful. It, it's like when I found out that Margot Robbie's an anagram of Robert Mugabe. It's good to know. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do anything with it. No. I'd love it if Keir Starmer does win the next general election and he comes out in front of number 10 and the first thing he says was, I did have a curry that night and it was bloody lovely. <laughs> And then goes, and I'm abolishing the 45 degree tax rate. <laughs> <laughs> and that was a mathematician in you, the 45 degree tax rate. Yeah, sorry. That's not the one that goes like that. That's not tax rate. Shut it. Shut it. <laughs> uh, it's or, not a thing. or you won't make the last two episodes. I uh, <laughs> think it's right. He's so obviously going to mess this up, isn't he, Starmer? He's so obviously good. Labour just don't win. It doesn't matter. He could have a thousand point lead, and then the week before the election, he'd do something to just make everyone hate. He'll just like somehow give a fatal dose of chicken pox to David Attenborough. <laughs> 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 Why might the shadow minister, Emily Thornberry, however, have regretted <gasps> rushing to the Labour Party conference? Yeah, she posted on Instagram that she was speeding, didn't she? Well, her mate took a photograph yeah. of her in the car that managed to include a picture of Thornberry driving on a motorway and the speedometer. Which said 81 miles per hour. I felt so bad for her. I know, I cause... know. The whole room trying to be outraged. <laughs> 81 miles per hour. <laughs> oh, 81. Oh, oh, oh. oh the vapors. Oh, 81 miles per hour. That's four miles over the kind of li limit that we actually can't even. <laughs> A lot of people don't know this as well, actually. It seems spooky, but Emily Thornberry is nearly an anagram of Lewis Hamilton. <laughs> Yeah, that round. Point for the great Laura Now we play a round call. Please don't hesitate to get in touch with my agent for any future television opportunities. <laughs> this game involves Angela and Glenn, so if you could make your way to the performance area, please. This round is a stand-up challenge. I launch a wheel of news, and wherever it chooses to stop, one of our performers must step forward and talk about that subject. Okay, here we go. Our first topic, please, is spin the wheel. First topic is technology. Angela. I, I embrace new technology. I do. I think it's brilliant. I'm really proud of the way we've all taken on new technology in the last few years. Who three years ago knew what Zoom was? <laughs> None of us did, did we? A, a couple of weeks ago, I had to do an online speed awareness course. You should be doing that on something called Zoom. But that's the world we live in now. <laughs> you know? And I appreciate it. Because I, I think you get to an age, you do, where you start to get a bit scared of new technology. It's happened to me. I'm 45. All right, I gave you a moment for a gasp of surprise. Fuck you all. <laughs> I thought you, and I've started getting scared of it. I noticed it about three years ago, I bought a tumble dryer, right? Now, that's not the thing that scared me, but when it was delivered to my house, I saw this tumble dryer was Wi-Fi enabled. And three years on, I've got no idea why. <laughs> why does a tumble dryer need Wi-Fi? Is drying clothes boring? Is it want to watch Netflix? I've got no idea. <laughs> done is make me paranoid that the Russians are going to hack it, and I, th I think they already have, because the other day I took my laundry out and all the little socks were inside one big one. <laughs> so, you know. But I think, no, I'm not going to be scared of new technology. It is, it is brilliant. I've got a phone that can recognise my face. That already makes it better than my nan. Come on. <laughs> Blame Hollywood. I do it for decades. Hollywood has told us, haven't they? Be afraid of new technology. The robots are coming. It's the rise of the robots. They're going to wipe out humanity. Be afraid of AI. I'm not scared of robots. You shouldn't be scared of robots. And I'll tell you why. Because they haven't even worked out how to tick a box that says, I am not a robot. <laughs> <laughs> That leaves us with Glenn. Let's see what your topic is. Let's spin the wheel. That's relationships. <laughs> Not what I think when I think relationships. Um, <laughs> I, so I, uh, I proposed to my girlfriend a few months ago, and uh, so she's going to keep her surname, uh, mainly because she rejected my proposal. And um, <laughs> I think... Yeah, look, we, we broke up over it. It was horrible, because it's horrible when you live with someone, you break up, one of you's got to move out, suddenly you've got this whole empty bed to yourself. You look at the side of the bed you both used to share, their half's permanently empty. Even to this day, I still stare at that top bunk and I miss her. <laughs> and, and you might be thinking, I've all sleeping in bunk beds as a couple. That's the least cool thing you can do. Incorrect. It is the coolest thing you can ever get to do with your life. You get to have sex with someone, then depart via a ladder. Yes, please. <laughs> 
we went on a date. I was so nervous because there's so many things you've got to worry about. How was I going to dress to impress her? What was I going to wear? You know, do I wear my glasses? Do I wear my contact lenses? You know, do I compromise? One contact lens and a monocle. Done it before. <laughs> I got so excited before the date, I bought stuff to wear for the date, and I got so excited when I bought the stuff, I wore it out the shop. I have never done that before in my life. I know, and you get weird looks when you do it. Why? I've bought those things, they belong to me. They're my condoms. I can do whatever I want, okay? <laughs> we had a wonderful time together, wonderful date. You know, we're having that fun, free flowing first date conversation, asking each other the usual questions Where was your first kiss? Who's your big celebrity crush? Which three of his images contains a fire hydrant? Good security <laughs> questions. <laughs> And eventually it became quite apparent that the date was going to go one step further, and I was terrified about that. Not because I wasn't ready to have sex, you know, I was thinking, of course I'm ready to have sex, you know, that prophylactic's been on since I left Matalan, but I, I, I couldn't <laughs> ruin the date. Not to sort of do myself down sexually, but I've always sort of worried that sex with me is a lot like Radio 4 comedy, uh, you know, and that it's sort of a, a grossly unappealing to anyone remotely my age. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and, 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 and just a minute, but we, we had a, a, a great time. I'm not going to go into details of it. We, we, we slept together. Uh, we did a favourite position, uh, her on top. Um, and, and me on top. It's how bunk beds work. <laughs> Thank you very much, Dan. Very good. Back here, that round. The boys go to Angela Barnes. Go and sit down. Our next round is called If This Is The Answer, What Is The Question? On the board are six categories. Laura, which category would you like? Let's go for world news, please, Dara. Excellent. World news it is. That is your topic. The answer is almost 100%. What is the question? Is it... Uh, between now and a general election, how much of a 33-point lead can Labour lose? <laughs> is it, uh, how much of me leaves the hairdresser? <laughs> <laughs> Is it how many of all the Mock the Week shows ever have we now recorded? <laughs> oh. Is it what percentage of rats can't cook? <laughs> <laughs> Is it what are the marks in a maths exam that will lead to an Indian father disowning you? <laughs> What are the chances that voice you recognise on that advert is Hugh Dennis? <laughs> <laughs> and why not? <laughs> is it of all the signatures on the Bring Back Mop petition, how many are from info at dara.com? <laughs> <laughs> is it how many of the dragons were interested in investing in my Peter Jones is a wanker t-shirt? <laughs> is it, um, for maximum hurt feelings, how much should be in before you say, is it in yet? <laughs> Is it, what are the chances of Dara suddenly deciding to launch a podcast in a few weeks' time? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is it what would be the Rotten Tomato score of my new Iranian Jane Austen adaptation, Do You Speak Farsi, Mr Darcy? <laughs> <laughs> How confident is Ed Sheeran that he independently came up with his next single, We All Live in a Blello Submarine? <laughs> Is it when I try to wash a chopping board in the sink, how much of my kitchen will get wet? <laughs> <laughs> and it's and it's <laughs> it's awful. Is it uh, how much of a porn video do I not watch? <laughs> 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 OK, then the correct answer is... How many people in my school found it funny when someone started a rumour that I wear a nighty? <laughs> <laughs> it is, I think, what percentage of the population in the four regions annexed by Russia voted to become part of Russia. Absolutely right. Thank you very much. That's correct, that is. <laughs> Although, obviously, it was meant more sarcastically than Hugh delivered it. Uh, <laughs> yes. The question I was looking for was how many people in the four Russian-occupied regions of Ukraine were apparently in favour of becoming part of Russia? This is news of a series of sham referenda. Russia has declared annexation of an area of Ukraine the sign of Portugal, a move that has been condemned by the West. So, 100%. I mean, if you're going to declare a result, you know, go 52-48, just for the first yeah, yeah. <laughs> I miss the days when annexing just meant putting your mother-in-law on a futon in the garage. <laughs> but that's the thing, the language of it is so, it's so, like, cleaned up. It, like, speaking as a citizen of a country that's done its fair share of annexing... Laura, <laughs> has Britain taken over territory elsewhere before? Um... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, look. Uh, 
Well, the initial move has prompted fears of escalation in the oh, conflict. the nuclear train. The nuclear train, yeah. yes. The nuclear train heading to the border, and obviously the West want to stop that. I reckon Mick Lynch could sort that out. <laughs> this is why we'll never be one of the big evil countries anymore, is it? Because nuclear train sounds menacing, whereas nuclear replacement bus service, not yeah. quite... No. <laughs> So there's going to be a there is going to be a nuclear war. So he's going to use. Why did we spend so long talking about mortgage rates? <laughs> there's going to be a nuclear. This is like worrying about what the food's going to be like at your wake. <laughs> on, a, on a lighter note, um, it's where we discuss the. Clearly, we've decided imminent nuclear war. Uh, there's mobilisation. I don't think it definitely means that we're definitely going to. Have, just to reassure no, people watching at home, we don't have information. You don't. Uh, but if you're watching this on Dave, it really. <laughs> <just feels, laughs> Have you got enough food in yeah. the bunker? Yeah. Do not leave the bunker. Do yeah. not leave the bunker. Yeah. Yeah. Dave does have, the, like, the news on it. They do have a news service on Dave, and I was watching it recently. Have you heard about this COVID thing? <laughs> <laughs> uh, meanwhile, uh, just to add to it all, how did Elon Musk spark an online row with Ukraine's president? He's suggested a peace plan, hasn't he? Yes, And he's done a Twitter poll about it, but unfortunately, the peace plan involves Russia getting Crimea. Yes, he did a, a Twitter poll which infuriated Ukrainians uh, and their outgoing ambassador to Germany, Andriy Melnik, sent this response. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so the word is fuck, by the way. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> it must be so satisfying. One of his aides must have been like, your account's been hacked. And he's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> I personally am choosing not to criticise a man who has just built an army of robots. <laughs> <laughs> Can I, uh, Robot Wars, Wars uh, is Robot Wars another of your shows that's been cancelled? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Part of my portfolio of cancelled shows yeah. that I sorry, sorry. sit at home watching endlessly going, it was the TV that got small. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready for my close-up. I'm ready for my close -up. Oh, not that close. Uh, <laughs> if you get, like, one more show cancelled, they're going to have to rename Dave Dara. <laughs> Personally, Dara, I wouldn't worry about it. The Daily Mirror is still having a go at me for having lost the match report. Yeah. <laughs> In other news, how are French government ministers dealing with the cost of living crisis? Stylishly. They're yeah. totally styling it out. Oh, oh, glorious. Right. Yeah. They're this... all wearing jumpers, right? But the thing is, that's all very nice if you're a French. <laughs> if you're Emmanuel Macron in a turtleneck, you're going to look hot, <laughs> right? Very but hot. it's a Tory in a turtleneck, he's Giles Brandreth. <laughs> <laughs> that was what I yeah, mean. Yeah, that, that is literally... No, 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 oh, look at me. Oh, I am dealing right. with the crisis. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Turn to turtlenecks and scarves, though, because in French politics, it's like, uh, the public not happy, protect the neck. I mean, it is, I'm a keen crocheter and knitter, right? And so I've been knitting blankets and stuff for, for this winter, because a lot of my family, you know, older people and stuff. But one thing I've started making is um, knitted bras. They're very good for keeping your... I'm going to sell them on Etsy. I've How got two names. How old are your either... kids? <laughs> In my hot tub, I need a knitted bra. <laughs> and I'm going to sell them on Etsy, and they're going to sell like hotcakes. I've got two names, either the Bradigan uh, or a pair of Titans. <laughs> if, the, if the bra goes into the water, not, do you not then slowly be dragged down by the weight of a wet, of a wet woolen bra drags you under the Stop water? Stop it, Dory, you're turning <laughs> me on. <laughs> <laughs> if, like, whenever well, Angela Barnes died, she drowned in a hot tub because her bra, her woolen bra, <laughs> dragged her to yeah. the surface and she couldn't get up again. Then the sleeves got really wet. Yeah. <laughs> the worst thing was, Reese was feeding at the time. <laughs> <laughs> Now we come to scenes we'd like to see, so if everyone can make their way over to the performance area. I'll read out this week's topics and then we'll see what our panelists can come up with. OK, here we go. The first subject is... Unlikely things to say at a job interview. Well, it says here it's been 17 years since you were last here at this job centre, Dara. <laughs> ah. <laughs> oh, I'd have to say shagging twin brothers. Oh, you mean workplace achievement? <laughs> no, so I don't think you quite understand. We've got a job in accounts. What do you mean? I thought you had a job for accounts. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 
Oh, I don't believe this. It's you. You won't know, but I swiped left on you last night. <laughs> Um, my biggest weakness, uh, probably misreading social cues. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, how did I hear about the job here at Yahoo Search? I'd rather not say. <laughs> no, I prefer talking like this, and that is why I'm applying for the job of taxi driver. <laughs> <laughs> My CV. Yeah, I just got this really cool new hole punch. <laughs> Why do I want to work in customer service? Your query is very important to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just the rise of big tech, isn't it? Technology taking all our jobs. You know, what did I do before this? I used to stand outside car dealerships going like this. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I am a team player who gets on with... Shut up! I'm talking! <laughs> well, you're saying it's disgusting now, but what do you think a golden handshake was? <laughs> Where do I see myself in five years? Well, still here, if you keep banging on. <laughs> Sorry I'm late. Uh, it's just I was robbing your house cos I knew you were out. <laughs> Biggest weakness? Wow, um, I'm, I'm a bit of a grammar Nazi and also just a regular Nazi. <laughs> <laughs> what qualifies me for the role of town crier, I hear you say? <laughs> <laughs> the next topic is... Things that would change the mood in the bedroom. Bees! <laughs> <laughs> That's quite the damp sleeve you have there, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Alexa, play Angela Zash's audiobook. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, it's just, we're, we're just one of those families who do everything together. <laughs> do you mind if we put Mock the Week on while we do it? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just that when you said you were an animal in bed, I didn't think you meant panda. <laughs> Are you horny? No? OK. <laughs> Are you wearing glasses? <laughs> <laughs> I hope you don't mind if Jack sits in. He's shadowing me this week. <laughs> <laughs> I recently got a penis enlargement, or erection, as some people call it. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Put your finger on it. And now switch it back to match of the day. <laughs> hey, girl, are you the Edinburgh Comedy Awards? Cos I'd like to enter you repeatedly without much success. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Touch it. Bop it. Flick it. Pull it. <laughs> Quick, before your son Reese gets back. Shall I put my Michael Gove mask on? <laughs> the name's Glenn, and you'll be screaming for more, cos what I give you will not be enough. <laughs> down a bit. Down a bit. Down a bit more. And that's how you draw a graph of the UK economy. <laughs> I want to suck your dick! <laughs> I saw that guy at a job interview recently. Do you want to see my sexy body? Well, come with me, it's in the freezer. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, they were out of whipped cream, but I did get milk, so we're just going to have to be vigorous. <laughs> and, and where's the milk from, specifically? <laughs> uh, you must work out a lot, cos you fucking stink. <laughs> At the end of that round, boys, to Glenn, Laura and Reese. <laughs> That's the end of the show. This week's winners are Reese James, Laura Lex and Glenn Moore.
Congratulations to Angela Barnes, Judith, and Ahershaw. It's like what? It's nice. Thank you for watching. Two more to go. I'm Darbreen. Good night. Is humanity doomed to repeat the mistakes of the past, concluding her epic journey through history? Conk on Earth. Press red to watch on BBC iPlayer.